the power of a strong man displayed in the tungabhadra it was a dense forest trees of tall height thick vegetation all around creepers entwining the trees as if trying to outdo them in height were ubiquitous in that ambience even small plants revealed luxuriant growth in a conducive environment of plentiful water and fertile soil flowers of various hues blossoming in the trees and plants presented a feast to the eye in that heavenly atmosphere monkeys hanging from the thick creepers and branches of trees leaping hither and thither was a sight that would have drawn one's mind away from other thoughts the chirping and tweeting of birds suddenly intensified in one place and the noise of dry leaves getting scattered and the simultaneous crackling of the twigs became conspicuous perhaps due to some animal having darted there the ears could pick the distant trumpeting of elephants though feebly and in such an ambience ashramas of rishis dotted the banks of a river flowing to its brim since the place had a perennial stream of water and fruit bearing trees were a plenty the rishis were tempted to stay there for their undisturbed meditation durvasa muni and other spiritually powerful sages too had their abodes in that place one evening durvasa muni was in meditation in that forest till dusk but strangely he was shaking his head during his contemplation and suddenly he opened his eyes and let out a grunt continuing it thereafter without respite the recluses living in other ashramas assembled there when they heard the unusual noise poor rishis somehow my meditation is getting disturbed the flow of the river is not also steady and presently it appears to be very less as i surmise from its placidity we should know the reason for this unnatural phenomenon yes guru it is bizarre that there should be such erratic flow in the river observed the others when another sage came there hurriedly and expressed the same with an astonished look we have been talking about the same matter we can find out whether the flow has scaled down in the tunga or the malati said another rishi yes you both proceed to the confluence of the rivers and ascertain the position said durvasa muni later addressing the others he told them all of you remain calm i shall go in dhyana and find out the cause for this so saying he entered the ashrama to sit for meditation it was the holy land proximate to the confluence of the tunga and the malati the point of their mingling being not far away as it was a place fed by rain all through the year the river was always in full flow but strangely it was calm now and it was to know why it had become so the muni had gone into meditation after some time when durvasa muni came back to his normal state he thundered i know the reason now yes he is a strong person no doubt but can he do like this of course we can go to some other place upstream but what about all those who live further down what happened guru it is all bhima's doing durvasa was responding when the rishis who had gone to the confluence of the rivers came shouting bhima bhima and when they heard had narrated things seen there all the rishis jointly declared we shall go to bhima en mass and seek justice questioning him about his action after pondering for a while durvasa advised them no please he has sworn an oath so he may not be receptive to what the others tell him then what is to be done please we shall go to krishna at once and make our supplication to him there should not be any delay i know where krishna should be now uh, um, said durvasa an instant earnestly everyone left the place with the sage let us turn our attention now to what bhima was doing at that point of time panch pandavas were once staying in this forest during their exile 
it was at a place about 9 km from the point of mingling of the Tunga and the Malati, the spot now known as Talle Durga. Draupati had asked them, how long should we be staying here? And Dharma responded to the, uh, it's indicating the approximate period. But the water springs seem to be less here. So we should move on to a place where water is plentiful. Is there any such place nearby? Asked Draupati. Yes, it's there, about a Yojana away. There is a confluence of rivers. If so, let us proceed there. No, we need not go there. The river itself can be brought here. For this is a good place for us, said Bhima, much to the astonishment of others. Bhima, you can certainly do that. When will it be possible for you to bring the river to this place? Queried his sibling. Why wait for the right time? At once you can go there, is it not? Expressed Draupati. Yes, Draupati, I shall go today itself. Near the confluence of the rivers, I shall erect a dam and divert the river water this side. While going there, I shall tread in the river and channelize the water to flow here. Till then, where are we to go for water? Definitely before dawn, I shall make the river water flow this side. Till then, use the water available here. Will it be possible? Why? I swear that I shall complete the dam construction before sunrise. But if the day breaks, before I accomplish my task, my vow be would become meaningless. I shall therefore ensure that it will not be negated, said Bhima and started walking towards the confluence of the rivers, quaking the earth in his strides. Tunga and Malati were rushing towards the mingling point and were coursing from there as the confluent river. Bhima started heaving in the river, big boulders collected from the forest. Standing on one side of the river, he was hurling large stones to the opposite bank and across the river, replicating his own feet as Hanuman in his earlier avatara, when he had carried to Lanka the Sanjeevi Parvata from the Meru range of mountains and after its purpose was served, had flung it back to its original place, perching it at exactly the same spot. So it was not at all a difficult task for Brahma, Bhima, to the, uh, throw the boulders to the other side of the river. And as the boulders were piling up in the river, the flow was impeded. And it became not only wavered, but there was also a spilling of the water all around. Even after dusk, extending into the night, there was continual tossing of the boulders by Bhima. The ashramas of Rishis and of Durvasa Muni were along the bank of the river. The Rishis were enchanted by that atmosphere, what with unending flow of river water and abundance of fruits, vegetables and the availability of good quality wood for fashioning their religious stuff, all those rooting them to that place. Since Bhima had created hardship for them, the Rishis ran to Krishna for succor. If Durvasa had so chosen, he could have cursed Bhima and prevented his mission fructifying. But he was hesitant, pondering how long it may take for his malediction to carry its impact on Bhima, counteracting his prowess and the potency of his vow. When the reclu what the recluses needed then was an instant solution to their problems. And whether they got it and how they it came about, find narration in the next chapter.